Hello. Hello, Hello. Nagul. Thanks oh, for joining. Nice working. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So let's get started. So we have Norbus today, and uh, yeah, and uh, we have a, like a session on understanding HPK. I will uh, hand over to Norbert now. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, from Shemshugali, you that we are to do. That's what Alice says. So my name is Norbert, welcome everyone. And today I'm going to talk about uh, hybrid public key encryption, uh, which can send the first message encrypted without like prior oh, communication. I forgot to share my, my presentation. I'm sorry about that. Um, So perhaps yeah, today is, is not my day for the technical stuff I see. Let me just open the presentation really quick uh, in the browser. It's loading. Screen is not properly visible. Yeah, it's now good. Is it? Is it better? Uh, not better. Yeah, this is this is better. Uh, let me just. Uh... Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, that's it. So, yeah, let's talk about uh, HPKA. For now, uh, so actually, it's a hybrid, hybrid public key encryption. It's an encryption scheme, which means uh, it uses uh, symmetric and asymmetric uh, cryptography. Uh, it, it combines the advantages of the asymmetric encryption and uh, the performance benefits of the, of the symmetric cryptography. Uh, the first draft was made in January 2020, and we are actually now at the 12th, uh, and uh, it came out today, uh, so it is going re really quickly. For now, the changes are not so big, um, more like just like formal and, and typos, but uh, they are still uh, still changes in the uh, in the in the draft. Uh, the draft is proposed at uh, at IRTEF by the Crypto Forum Research Group. Um, they are more hybrid. Um, encryption schemes out there uh, but why is HPK so good let's say uh, compared to to the other ones uh, HPK provides uh, authentication mode uh, it, it says to be in CCA2 secure and uh, using current primitives like uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman HKDF and SHA2. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the modes. HPK comes with four different modes. Uh, there is the basic mode, uh, then the, the authentication mode. So the messages can be authenticated with an asymmetric key and uh, an authentication mode with, with the pre-shared key, and then we just can combine the, these two to achieve like uh, authentication and with the pre-shared key. Um, the 
the encryption scheme uh, comes with like more modes, like there is a single shot API, which means that the messages can be sent, uh, like there, there is just only one message which can be sent, no more. That's why it's single shot API. So that means uh, a context is created, one message is sent and it's closed. Multi-shot API is like for multiple messages. I have to say that the message direction is only unidirectional. Uh, so the sender can send to the recipient, but not vice versa. If we have to achieve uh, bidirectional communication, it's a possibility uh, by exporting, exporting the secret and using that, but um, the purpose, like the main um, goal of the HPK is just unidirectional communication. So what, what is it consisting of? Uh, HPK has three main building blocks, the K derivation function, the K encapsulation mechanism and authenticated encryption with associated data. As you can see on the, on the feature, uh, the first part, the CAM uses a symmetric cryptography and the AEID using symmetric. Uh, the K encapsulation mechanism creates a shared secret using the K schedule, uh, which is later on used uh, for, for encrypting the, the messages. Uh, the HKDF, uh, so the K derivation function uses HMAC um, in both parts, in the CAM and later on uh, in the K schedule. Um, to, to achieve domain separation, because like we use a uh, K derivation function in two separate uh, uh, places, we want to achieve a uh, domain separation. So the functions would look like uh, different, like different functions. Uh, that's why HPK are using labels. Uh, so when the, the K is uh, derivated, like there is, um, they are not, not the same because of the labels. Um, so let's see, um, that's what I talked about. When we have the KDF, uh, they are labeled and we have to state if we want to use uh, the label for the CAM or for anywhere else in the, in the HPKA. There are two main functions, the extract and expand. So the extract, yeah, extracts a key from a key material, which uh, should be random. And uh, the second one expands a key to our desired length. Uh, the key encapsulation uh, comes with encapsulation and decapsulation. Uh, and there are two different versions for the basic and the authenticated mode. Uh, the AID it comes with seal and open, one for encryption and the other one uh, is for the decryption of the message. And there is one more uh, exporting the secret, which I say if we need to use bidirectional or any other reason, uh, we can export the secret from the context and use it. So let's see how the encapsulation works. Uh, as I said before, the messages are sent encrypted uh, without prior communication, which is true, but uh, we still need the public key of the receiver. So let's suppose that we, when we start uh, the scheme, we already have the public key of the receiver and we don't care how, to, how we get that. Then we have to derivate our uh, key pair uh, as you can see, uh, I use E here, which means ephemeral. 
so it's only generated for the k encapsulation then it's throw away and uh, never use the k then we compute uh, diffie hellman from the public key of the receiver and our, our private key and create a chem context by concatenating the uh, public key of the receiver and and our public key of the i mean the sender's public key uh, from that uh, we compute again uh, using the k derivation and by that we can get the shared secret uh, the output of encapsulation is the public key and the shared secret okay so why why do we have to output the public key when i said that we have to throw it away the answer is really easy we have to decapsulate so from the on the on the other other side of the sender oh sorry on the receiver we already have the key pair but to create the chem context we need the key, we need both key pairs both public key pairs the ephemeral and the receivers so uh, we send over the the public key the ephemeral public key so the the receiver can create the the context and the shared secret too uh, so there's a little example using the library how can we uh, set up a context and uh, use uh, use encryption so we're using hpk context here to set up the context we are using uh, functions functions like hpk setup base uh, at the end the nodes like is it the sender or the receiver uh, then we have to denote the, the mode we want to use, base, authentication, PSK, or both. Uh, we have to uh, tell it the public key of the receiver, some info, and then we have to state uh, which uh, algorithms we want to use for the CAM, the KDF, and the AEAD. These have to be um, said like before, the two two par parts have to agree on uh, on the same algorithms here. It should be uh, implementation, well, said in the implementation. Um, to creating the context for the sender, we have to provide uh, a random function because we are generating the ephemeral uh, at this part. Uh, so to create the, uh, the, the context for the receiver, it's almost the same. Uh, we are providing the, the ephemeral and or uh, public key pair, public and private key pair. Uh, then actually the, the arguments are the same. So when we have uh, a context, we can use it for encryption and decryption. Uh, so there are the, the, the two functions for that. Uh, as you can see, it's it's almost uh, mirrored. It's just only the, the the only difference is the output and the input, the plain text of the cipher text, and we got here some AAID or associated data. Okay. As you read through the slide, you can perhaps see that there are like vulnerabilities. And just like two secure parts. Yeah, we can say that like there is no perfect system. So there are all the time like some imperfections, but let's start with the secure part. So as I said before, uh, there is the indistinguishable VT uh, cipher text choose an attack which is secure for that means that the attacker can uh, adaptively choose the cipher text attack uh, the cipher text get them decrypted and then it can choose like again some cipher text to be decrypted and he can analyze it uh, there is a domain separation I, I was talking before at the KDF um 
Yeah, and there are some things that are somewhat secure about. There is replay protection, which is not quite protection, let's say, but uh, messages are created by, by open should be, oh, sorry, uh, the encryption created by seal should be opened in order as they were created at the open part. This gives uh, somewhat uh, protection, but nothing else. So there are vulnerabilities. Uh, there's the K compromise impersonation, which means if the case uh, gets stolen, then like everybody can, or everybody who, who stole the keys can uh, decrypt the messages like all the time which were sent, they can be decrypted. Um, and yeah, there is forward secrecy, which should should be in somewhat secure because um, it's not secure when the recipient is compromised uh, in any mode, but it is secure when the sender is compromised because we are using ephemerals. Um, so, as I said, there, like, there is no perfect system. The HPK's goal and focus are these. So, the focus is message secrecy, export uh, case secrecy, and sender authentication. For the future, um, the project is proposed as an integration to Nettle and uh, implementation of the of the single shot API because for now it's only the multi shot API available and there are uh, other systems which are already looking for HPKA uh, and these are the MLS and uh, the client hello in TLS 1.3. Uh, here you can see some uh, references the the draft and uh, analysis of the of the protocol uh, i want to thank uh, daiki uh, my mentor we were working on this together and uh, he was a really good help and yeah thank you so thank you for for being here and if you have any questions uh, you can ask them Thank you, Norwood. It was a great session. Please feel free to put a question in Q&A section if there are any. Let's wait for a couple of minutes, see if you have any questions. Yeah, sure. I will update the slides uh, on the on the schedule later on. Sure. Can you ping your uh, like uh, where he he or she can connect with you?